Hi, this is Esther Lin for MMAfighting.com, and I'd like to share a few images from my experience at UFC 188. We're back in Mexico City and at another open workout at the beautiful Interactive Museum of Economics. Fabricio Verdum is the first fighter to arrive and greet the fans. Henry Cejudo shows off his salsa skills next, and on the stage, he noted his love of fighting for the ladies. Then, Cain Velasquez displayed his striking for the fans who have waited so long for Velasquez to finally fight here in Mexico. The next day is for media interviews. The ballroom was packed from wall to wall with reporters, so I had to squeeze my way around in order to find angles from which to shoot. Everyone seemed in grand spirits to be here in Mexico City. On stage, Velasquez's heavyweight belt was displayed alongside Verdum's interim title belt. But as we've been hearing all along, by the end of this week, there would only be one. The two champions addressed the huddled media, each with their own very distinct styles. The two sat only a few feet from each other their identical belts as the wall between them. I stood here for quite some time watching them. Whatever animosity might brew between them, they barely acknowledged each other's presence. Then it was time for face-offs, and after the great stare-down between Tisha Torres and Angela Hill, Hill turned to the press and curtsied. The two heavyweights faced off, turned forward, and while Velasquez remained serious, Verdum already broke into his usual shtick. Then, when both were handed their belts, Verdum decided to one-up Velasquez and raise his trophy high into the air, already sure of his triumph. At the weigh-ins, Leslie Smith reunited with the two doctors that treated her torn ear here in Mexico City last fall. They posed with a picture of Smith's ripped, bloody lobe. In repeat of their first face-off a few months back when the fight was announced, Angela Hill offered her hand to shake, and when Torres reached forward, Hill pulled her hand away and slicked her hair. Torres couldn't believe she fell for it again, but they embraced as friends and competitors, and it was just a little good-natured fun. In contrast to that friendly rivalry, Gilbert Melendez and Eddie Alvarez, who had been fated to meet so many times, whose names were circling as the top talent outside the UFC for so long, now fumed at each other, chomping at the bit. Saturday couldn't come soon enough. Finally, what the fans came to see, the crowd erupted as Velasquez and Verdum faced off. This time, Verdum reserved his antics and both remained serious. In the morning before the fights, MMA Fighting's cameraman and I walked to a nearby aviary. We had this ongoing personal joke, the inappropriate fist pose, which is to fist pose with things you should not fist pose with. But this one is actually appropriate since in essence, this peacock is flexing too, strutting at us as the bro of the bird world. It's fight night in Mexico City, and everyone is feeling the effects of the altitude as many of the early fights fall into a lull of exhausted circling and awkward displays of energy preservation. An early eye poke stifled the promise of a fun fight, but Johnny Case fought as hard as he could with one eye left, and in the end, the fans cheered Case over their countryman for it. Energized by their ovation, Johnny Case roared right back validated in the best possible way by this attentive, appreciative crowd. That fantastic energy lifted the arena and suddenly there were two back-to-back sub-minute guillotines, as if the fighters wanted to get their fights finished before the thin air struck them. Henry Cejudo then entered the arena as the Aztec warrior. The Olympic theme song gave way to war drums. This is a terrible photo, but I just wanted to know how great it is when a fighter takes control of his image in this bold way. 
After the fight, disappointed with his performance, Suhuro apologized for the lackluster showing in what will now be known as the Bad Taco post-fight speech. Then this wild fight. Charles Rosa came into this bout a highly touted, tough prospect, and with good reason. But this would be Yair Rodriguez's night to show what he's been working on since moving to Chicago. Rodriguez dedicated himself wholeheartedly to the coaching of Mike Valle and Izzy Martinez and shined brightly here in this fight. Even in his impressive win, the altitude affected Rodriguez as he vomited during his post-fight interview. Bits of something clung to his now wet shirt. UFC President White said later that several fighters hurled backstage. However embarrassing it might seem, I would say it showed that he gave everything. All of his effort went into that fight. Here, he stands with his coaches, and they are so proud of him. You can see it in their happy faces. Especially Martinez, who seemed taller than usual in this moment. The animosity leading up to this fight erupted in the first round between Melendez and Alvarez. Gilbert Melendez comes out swinging. Very quickly, Alvarez's eye shut from the strikes. The Philly fighter bit down, though, seemed to fight harder now that he was hurt. And the tides would turn as Melendez began to feel that elevation and his chest heaved for air. Somehow, Alvarez weathered the onslaught and kept coming forward, battling through that pain to earn the victory, essentially winning by enduring and surviving. Now, though, the lights dimmed as we waited for the unification of the heavyweight championship. It was the loud hush, a rumble of a crowd trying to contain its excitement. Two years away from the cage, Cain Velasquez entered to a deafening roar. I looked around the arena brimming with anticipation. I was very nervous. Velasquez and Verdum faced off and I cleared my throat. This is it. The fight begins, and aside from a flurry of hard shots to start the first round, Verdum seems to control the pace very quickly. During the week, I politely listened to everyone's predictions and couldn't shake that dark feeling inside about Velasquez's time away from the cage. How unstoppable Verdum and his teammates have looked lately, and how the last time people so mercilessly underestimated Verdum was in that Fedor fight. I was there and it always reminded me never to underestimate Verdum. Before that third round, I saw something I'd never seen before, an exhausted Cain Velasquez, bruised and bleeding, resting his hands on his hips, trying to breathe slowly. Fabricio Verdum continued to smartly control the fight, mixing knees and straight punches that halted Velasquez's movement. Frustration then sent Velasquez head first into Verdum's constricting arms, and then suddenly, the fight was over. Verdum smiles. His grin reminds me of that baby panda. He's so genuinely happy. A lot of fighters have that aggressive post-victory scream, that guttural cry that is both joyous and frightening, but for Doom's is solely joy. For Doom's celebration is brightly gleeful, and perhaps why people underestimate him, because he doesn't look the part and shows so little of that burning aggression we imagine in our prize fighters. Herb Dean's tender crouch to the defeated Velasquez in the background, a fan in the far reach of the spotlight, hands on his head in disbelief. Again, Verdum rose that belt into the air. It was now unequivocally his to proclaim. Two kings with their gold vied for the throne and Verdum triumphed in the end. Verdum shared that pride with his team and then they danced about singing. I thought back to the time when I saw them in the hallways of what used to be the HP Pavilion with Forrest Whitaker singing and chanting Verdum time. Velasquez descended the stairs of the cage, and his wife waited there, with her arms open to embrace him. Longtime teammate Babalu Sabral, who I've been photographing for years, smiled at me with simultaneous wonder, happiness, relief. 
and then fanned himself as if to prevent fainting from all the very physical and emotional feelings. In the post fight press conference, spirits were high as the night was a success, even as Cejudo laughed at the idea of being a title contender after his performance. Fabricio Verdum kept true to himself and made his horse face even as Dana White spoke. Velasquez sat silently next to the poster image of himself. This unfortunate before and after display. The stoic heavyweight remained serious as stone. Velasquez never dipped his head in disappointment, didn't shed a tear, his voice didn't even break when answering questions. Cain Velasquez looked forward, eyes focused on something that burned before him. It was now so late, we were now really in the next morning, and it was time to leave. Once the interim champion, Verdun smiled, held that belt proudly on his shoulder as we closed the night, asking him to pose for us. Now, after all this time and two extensive camps in Toluca, now Fabrizio Verdun is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. This is Esther Lynn for MMAfighting.com and thank you for watching.